If you're on a mission to leave Windows and your goal is to find something that's as close to SteamOS as possible until the official SteamOS releases, you're probably trying to find some sort of distribution of Arch, seeing as that's what SteamOS is based from. And this is why the very first video in this series was about Manjaro, which is probably one of the most famous Arch-based Linux distributions in the community. But let's say you didn't like Manjaro for whatever reason. Are there any alternatives? Well, Endeavor OS, which was based off of Arch, seems to be targeted more at advanced users. So we're looking for something that is beginner friendly. And on that note, today we are looking at a Linux distribution called Garuda. If you'd like to follow along, you'll need a Ventoy USB. You can turn any spare USB lying around into a Ventoy USB. And we're about to go through the very fast version of how to get that USB set up. As there is a long form version in this video, and if you've watched every video in this series, we don't want this part to get too repetitive for you. So here's the fast version, and if it's too fast for you, check out this video. And if you're just kicking back and relaxing and watching to see what all the fuss is about, sit tight for a minute. Grab a USB, back up all the data on that USB, download Balina Etcher, download Ventoy, open Balina Etcher. In the first section, select Ventoy. In the second section, select your USB. Double check that you've backed up all the data on that USB, because once you hit flash, it will be wiped and you will have a Ventoy USB. Once again, here is the slow version if you need it, because I understand that was very fast, especially for beginners. But it's important to have even the fast version here, so ideally you don't have to jump around between videos to get the whole picture. So if you've watched that, and now you're coming back here with a Ventoy USB, we're about to download Garuda right now. Unless you're planning on flying to Indonesia, type in Garuda Linux into your browser's search engine. Once you've clicked on the right link, the web page should look something like this. Click on download at the top. Now you'll see a lot of different versions of Garuda. There is one specific version we'll be using today. At the time of filming, the Garuda Gaming Edition is the third option from the top. Click on download, which should put the ISO file into your downloads folder. Once that's done downloading, plug in your Ventor USB, then either drag and drop or copy and paste the .iso file onto your Ventor USB, then safely eject. Next up, the obligatory warning about backing up your data, specifically the data on the PC that you want to install Garuda on. This is necessary no matter which installation method you pick, and especially if you're following this tutorial note for note, because erase disk is the option we'll be picking later on. So with your data backed up somewhere that isn't the PC that you're installing Garuda on, switch that PC off. Find the F2 or delete keys on your keyboard, turn on your PC and rapidly press either the F2 or delete keys until you see a screen that looks something like this. This is the BIOS. If your computer booted straight back into the operating system you are using before, shut it down and try the alternative key, F2 if you tried delete, or delete if you tried F2. Once you're in the BIOS, look for either a boot menu or a boot override. On this Gigabyte motherboard, it's under save and exit. On this Asus motherboard, it's on the front page on the bottom right. Once you're there, look for your USB. Then either click on it or press enter while hovered over it. Then we'll be in Ventoy. We want to use the arrow keys to hover over Garuda, then press enter. Normal mode is fine, so press enter again. Garuda's default boot option is perfectly fine, so you can either press enter or wait for the timer to finish. Now we're in the live USB or try before you buy portion of Garuda, and you'll notice that everything is extremely colorful. But also worth noting is that our buttons for closing, maximizing, and minimizing are on the opposite side, just like Mac OS. But that doesn't mean that we're using GNOME, which is closer to Mac OS in style. This is actually a very highly customized version of KDE, and highlights just how much choice you have and how many changes you can make while on Linux. Our welcome screen has a wide array of options, but unless you want to get a feel for this OS, 
We're interested in installing it to an SSD so we can get gaming as soon as possible. The install option is in the second row and second from the right. You know what to do with language and location. Erased disk is the simplest option as always, but you're welcome to try partitioning if you're confident with it. When we get to creating a local account, the auto login option isn't here, but we'll find it after install. One final review and the install has begun. If we're comparing directly to Endeavor OS, we didn't get the options for changing the bootloader or for packages to install. Both of those options are maybe for a little bit more advanced users. So even though the default options were absolutely fine and we could just click next, not having them here and keeping things even more simple for beginners is always a good thing. Again, that's not anything against Endeavor OS as possible. It's just different communities with different distributions for different purposes, which is what's so great about the Linux community. Once we're done installing, we'll restart our PC and the next time it boots, it should get us into the login screen of Garuda. The first thing we'll see on the desktop is a setup assistant Clicking next gives us a terminal. Yes, that's right. We're starting off with a terminal. So while this does technically fail the no terminal challenge, we'll see how many times we'll need a terminal elsewhere. For now, all you have to do is type in your password and press enter. Then after a few moments, you'll be prompted to press Y and enter again. So why give Garuda a chance after failing the no terminal challenge when Endeavor OS gave us the exact same window for updates. Well, Endeavor OS is more of a build-it-yourself distribution, so we needed a terminal to install a software center or app store, which really isn't ideal for beginners. Whereas this flavor of Garuda claims to have everything we need for gaming. And if we take a look at some of the text in this terminal, it is updating a lot of things pre-installed, such as Wine, which is what Proton's built off of, the Heroic Launcher, which we'll look at a bit later, and Steam. So if that's the only terminal we need, Steam is pre-installed and there's an app center, that's bonus points. All this would need to pass the no terminal challenge is a graphical user interface or a GUI for this process. That's probably not a priority for the developers though, and you'd be hard pressed to find anyone else trying so hard to use Linux without a terminal to the point where they'd pass on a distro especially on Arch. There is something else that might skip our use of terminal as well. And that's the option to set updates to be automatic in the settings menu. If this works, then you'd have to live with automatic updates. Hopefully that wouldn't be a deal breaker for you as some people might hate auto updates after Windows traumatized them. But it appears this terminal window is ticking off something on our to-do list anyway, being system updates. It's extremely important that we let these updates do their thing and not mess with too many other things in the meantime. Once they're done, you'll see green text telling you that it's all good and you should probably reboot. But closing this terminal brings us back to the setup assistant. So we'll go through that first. If you're not sure what these things are, you likely don't need them yet. But one thing to note is that we have the option to install whatever software center we'd like. You might remember that this was a suggestion in the Endeavor OS video to help beginners manage their applications without a terminal. So it's great to see this here. Although Discover is actually already pre-installed on Garuda, so we don't have to do anything from this menu. Once you click OK, it's time to restart. Power options aren't in the bottom left like vanilla KDE or the top right like GNOME. Instead, they're at the top left also like Mac OS. Click on the application launcher and remember where this is because once we've booted back into Garuda, we'll go hunting for Steam shortly after. Considering so much dedication has gone into the look of this distro, there's not exactly a dark mode to switch to, but we can switch themes if we like. So that leaves us with scaling for displays and resolutions higher than 1080p. Right click on the desktop and select display configuration. 200 is great for 4K, and there's plenty in between for other resolutions. Once you've got your scaling sorted, let's take care of auto login. Your settings menu is also in the dock, second from the right. So click on that if you've already closed your display settings and find colors and themes. 
Then click on Login Screen, SDDM. Now click on Behavior at the top right. Click the box next to Automatically Log In, then click Apply and fill in your password. After you filled in your password, the box next to Automatic Login might appear as unticked. But if we navigate away from this menu and then back to it, we can see that the setting has been applied. Because we're not 100% sure if setting automatic updates means we don't need to use a terminal at all with this distro, we'll also be skipping over installing DuckStation, PCSX2, RPCS3, Zemu, and Lutris for emulation and using other launches. But we do cover that in other videos where we are reasonably sure that we do not need to use a terminal at all. Which means, now it's time for Steam. We'll click on the application launcher again and hover over games. There's a lot here, but it's in alphabetical order. So we just need to scroll down to S for Steam. You'll notice that there are two versions here. We're going to pick the bottom one. Clicking on it gets us the login screen. It's the same as Windows from here. When you click install on a game, Proton will automatically download along with it. This is the magic source, which allows us to play our Windows games on Linux. Today's benchmark is F1 2018. The default settings were ultra high quality at 1080p. The average frame rate was 60 FPS, but that's due to the hardware of this system. When tested on a system with a 5700 XT, the game doesn't drop below 60 FPS at 4K. So can Garuda replace Windows? If automatic updates don't require a terminal, then technically it would pass the no terminal challenge. And if this PC was for a friend or a family member who you will be managing their PC for them, then this might actually be ideal for you as you don't have to teach them how to update, it will take care of it itself. But besides that, it seems that we have another beginner friendly distro that's based off of Arch that we can recommend.